this is always one of our favorite topics to go over. Uh, athletes absolutely love this one. We see a lot of people in competitions trying to fake this one, doing their best efforts, uh, but not very efficient at these efforts. So here is the secret to your sprint start. Right? Mechanically, what we're trying to do is gain an event, gain an advantage. We're really trying to use momentum to uh, be more efficient for ourselves. It's like riding a, a mountain bike or a 10 speed. You don't start off on that hardest, biggest pivot, or the biggest start gear, you try to pedal through. You start off on a small little quick one, gain some speed, and then gear up to another one, gear up to another one, so things become more efficient, right? So, how do we do this on the road? We do so by changing our, our stroke length, all right? We're gonna have two short strokes, two middle strokes, two long strokes, and then two full strokes. All those gonna be done as quickly and as explosively as possible, and with as little, little hip hinge as possible. So all we're gonna to try to use is our legs and our arms over a short distance for two to three strokes, over a middle distance, and over a long distance. So let's talk about what those distances are first. Get ourselves in, get my hand on. This is my neutral position, right? When the hand comes up, and I'm kind of sitting upright. My first two strokes, and the stroke rate is really depending on where you would hit your peak RPMs of that flywheel. Some people it's two, some people it's three. I've seen some people where it's been four strokes for them to get up to maximum speed before they can change in that next gear. So for me, it's usually two to three. I started my first two being from my toes, right above my feet, and my legs open, and my arms closed. There's no hip hinge here. One, two, then my next one is from a middle distance. I try to view just past the hook here as being my middle distance. And same thing, no hip hinge, my legs and arms move together. One, two, then fuller distance, long distance. I get as far far as I can. One, two, the third set, a fourth set, I open up my hips as well. Long. So like I said, these are done at a sprint speed. We're not looking to go at our normal pace. We look at our normal strokes per meter. Uh, fishing rowers, low 20s, 22, 24 for most male athletes. Um, Allow us have enough time to breathe and so forth. When I'm sprinting, those strokes per meter go through the roof, right? I'm trying to get two done as quick, two done as quick, two done as quick, two done as quick, and then I'm gonna back off my pace. So I'll give you a little demo of it right now. I start from my middle to my neutral position. It's gonna be too short, too middle, too long, too full. And then I will break into my normal row pace. Shorter the distance, the better it is to come off at the start. 
also be advised too that if you're doing successive sprints in a workout, maybe it's 10 rounds of uh, 100 meters and like some double unders or whatever else in that workout, you will burn through that sprint start eventually. So it's not something I'd recommend doing for a 10 or 20 round workout. But if you're in a competition and there's a buy-in for that, you will get on that rower last and get off first by incorporating that technique. I've done it a dozen times and it works fantastic. So work it, get the timing of it, make sure there's no hip movement in those first couple pulls, try to get the legs and the arms to work in unison rather than independently. So sprint start really breaks a lot of those rowing techniques we talked about in our LHA series in our rowing cadence. So give it, give it a run. Let me hear what your times are. Let me see what your, your 500 splits are. Send me some messages. I'd love to hear your feedback.